Ryan. What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I hope you all are having a good day. We have Basil on today. Sadly, Tim will not be on, but he'll be joining us Thursday again. Um, no, we're all looking forward to his analysis. Looking forward to hearing from Basil. Let's take a look at what we got going on right now. You have the E mini up about 1.5%. Same with the SPY. Russell up about 1.3%. The NQs up about 0.2%. Uh, uh, Dow futures up nearly a full percent there. Uh, let's see here. You have the dollar kind of staying a little bit to the downside here, right? So we're coming off that 103 level down to 102.56. Most likely to do uh, with the cooled inflation data. Uh, that we had yet lower PPI, same thing uh, with CPI as well. We're going to go over that in a moment here. Something that's unique to say. Well, first, let's say gold's up a little bit. You have silver down slightly, copper nearly flat. You have crude oil coming back down after, you know, quite a big pump up. You know, this, this lower price helped us a lot in CPI, of course. That's involved in the volatile CPI. So, you know, depending on what the news wants to talk about, doesn't, doesn't necessarily matter, right? You, you kind of look at core CPI, which is that stuff, less food and energy. Um, but regardless, energy commodities uh, were far lower both in May and June. So helping with that contraction. Let's see. Still dynamics a little bit. Tesla roaring back, probably a little bit to do with his conversation with presidential candidate Donald Trump on the X platform yesterday. Maybe what we were talking about a little bit before the end was a bit prescient um, because with that, I mean, the Trump media stock has dumped even further off about 3.5%. That was really the question I was posing at the end of the day yesterday is like with, you know, Elon Musk buying X and this whole deal with whatever it is of, of, of censorship and all that, does Trump media or truth social um, have, have a place? And I'm just like, probably not really, right? I, I think that was the reason for the advent of that and now with elon musk who's cozying up to donald trump does it seem like there's much need for something like truth social and so you're seeing djt dump a little bit right now Let's see what else you have meta up a little bit google up talking about their new pixel phone with ai in it uh very nice disney still doing nothing apple up a little bit um and then lucid popping as well that's been a pretty volatile stock recently let's talk uh, about CPI quickly. I'll pull over uh, the BLS chart here. So look at it adjusted, you know, year over year, the all items. I mean, 3% is pretty solid, right? If you're looking for a two target, you had food in June only increasing just about uh, 0.2 right here. Same with food away from home, roughly. You can see these contractions in energy, which are helping quite a bit as well. Let's see, the number one big thing, at least year over year, was used car and trucks. That's been nice. Transportation services up, shelter up. You know, I'm really curious. I, uh, you know, I'm not sure what the exact correlation is going to be with this because we're still in the nascent stages of these investigations. But, you know, these this antitrust investigation into RealPage, right? I mean, they're, they're price fixing the rents. Does that have an impact on this? I would say, yeah, probably. But the point is, is how much... But the question is, how much weight does that have, right? It would be interesting to see if this actually contributed quite a bit uh, to the increase, um, at least in shelter. So we take the food index rose 0.2% in June after increasing 0.1% in May. The index for food at home rose 0.1%. Energy index fell 2% in June as it did in May. Again, we're just pumping uh, so much. The index for all items, less food. So that's the core CPI rose 0.1% in June. So this is the smallest increase in this index since August 2021, uh, of course, everyone's like, hey, man, that probably means we're going to get this uh, this rate cut really quickly. Now, Bostic from the Fed said he wants still a little more data on economy before cutting rates. He said it'd be really bad. Obviously, we started cutting rates and we had to turn around and raise them again. This is a thing that can happen because I'm willing to wait, but it's coming. You're having this weird confluence, again, like a disconnect between what the Fed's saying, maybe what the data's saying, and on top of, you know, what the bankers are saying, maybe some analysts. You have a lot of analysts saying that you're going to have to need, uh, it's going to require a, a greater percent rate cut uh, because of this looming recession. This is interesting. I had an article pulled up that uh, imports are not slowing down in any capacity. 
um, which you would expect to see uh, before a recession happens. Um, and then you have Bank of America also coming out and saying that they don't see a recession um, happening. A lot of interesting stuff going on uh, with this for sure. So, you know, we take a look at what's going on in the SPY right now, and we're moving up, but this is still on, no, we're not at the end of the day yet, but it's still on contracting volume. There's not a lot of volume going into this run-up today, right? So the excitement maybe isn't fully there. Maybe people might be a little, I don't know, just some apprehension in getting in on it, right? But this, you know, I, I think can kind of suggest that you're setting up for maybe a retest of lower levels. Maybe we go sideways to see what happens. Um, but anyways, that's something to really keep in mind, that a lot of this move up, we can look in you know, the composite itself, same kind of movements, right? Now, you're getting a little bit of a boost, at least in the composite, um, from these AI PC sales. This has been, like, massive for a lot of these companies. You're seeing Intel pop up today. You're seeing AMD pop up today. Let me see if I can get uh, the exacts on it. And it's interesting. I think it was something like 14%. Yeah, let's, yeah. You have Apple 1.7% up today, AMD up 246 Let's pop that on the chart right now. And this idea is that you've had 14% of all PCs shipped during the last quarter, right? Were these AI-capable PCs. This is driving a lot of you know, consumer, at least it's, it's taking up a lot of, of that chain. I mean, like, to have something released just in one quarter, now it's comprising 14% of all sales in that quarter, is pretty decent. And I would still think that a lot of people are still apprehensive to buy one. They don't know what's going on with it. Um, you know, that changes as these things, you know, in the future are really going to be the only thing you can buy are these AI-capable PCs unless you go to some very uh, niche kind of brands. This is 8.8 .8 million AI-capable PCs. Apple's dominating the AI-capable PC market with its entire Mac lineup, which features the M-series chips with the Neural Engine. The company recently unveiled Apple Intelligence. Windows side OEMs like Lenovo, HP Inc., and Dell are significantly expanding their AI capable PC portfolios. Of course, I think Qualcomm got downgraded the other day. And now we're back up, trading about 3.2%. People are loving uh, Snapdragon chips. Uh, folks, stay right there. We're going to be right back with Basil Chapman.